Hey guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farm. I know it's been a pretty good while since we put out a video, but uh, you know things got hectic during the summer, spring summer garden, and uh, you know the heat is just about too hot to do anything outside. But yeah, um, bring you up to speed. We were pretty successful with the uh, the farm stand we had at the house. Um, we're going to actually we're going to step that up a little bit next year. We're going to do that again, and hopefully. Um, It'll be on a little larger scale next year we had the produce to do it with um the guy that i was selling everything to uh you know it, when everybody around here has garden it's hard to move certain things like squash and things like that but one of our biggest sellers um were cucumbers we sold a bunch of cucumbers um just on that little farm stand we had and it's a good thing that i had as many as i did because uh we were able to you know keep stuff on the table um fairly consistent and you know towards the end of the the growing season you know things got a little stale because you know like i said everybody had squash everybody started having cucumbers when everybody's garden started coming off home garden started coming off you know they didn't need what we were growing but you know that just tells me next year we get an earlier start um get our produce out there you know as soon as we can and i think we'll move a lot more that way beans are gone all of this squash is gone and what i want to show you guys we are beginning the the start of our 30 inch bed garden here um this year for the fall garden we're gonna put everything that we we can in 30 inch beds now i am going to order my jane cedar tomorrow and uh, i need it to be more consistent when i plant my mustard and spinach and beets carrots things of that nature I, I mean it's a pretty good investment up front but you know if if we're going to do this we're going we're going to have to do it right and everything that i've read about the jane you just it's more precise than any cedar on the market plus honestly it's about the only one you can get your hands on right now um there's a lot of them out there but it just you know they can't keep them in stock people people's getting them so quick but and the Jang was like that for a long time, but right now it's readily available, so we're gonna get our hands on one. Because here in probably in two weeks, we will be putting in mustard, spinach, uh, turnips, things of that nature. What I want to do first is once I get all my beds laid out, I want to come back and I want to tarp everything. Well, I'm gonna mend it first because I'm gonna clean that ch uh, chicken coop out this weekend, and I'm gonna put that in the garden. I'm gonna tarp everything, and I'm gonna leave the tarps on it until it's time for us to sow our seeds and then we'll roll the tarps do a little bit more mending and get on with the fall gardening all right guys so we're up here in the barn and let me give you a shot of what we got started so far there's two trays of cauliflower this is a uh, twister cauliflower which is a 55 day variety and this is snowball cauliflower it's another 55 day variety these are the cucumbers i was telling you about and you can see they're pushing their third leaf already fourth leaf almost be ready to fertilize them guys here shortly and then we got a tray of green magic broccoli now it's looking pretty good up there um down here two trays of lettuce this is cherokee and this is magenta and this is bobcat cabbage which you can see is putting on its third leaf so about time to fertilize them too and i started a tray of savoy king cabbage but it didn't germinate all that well and i know why because it's i mean it's, it's hot in this barn it'll get 100 degrees in here easy and uh, today it's not that bad it's probably mid 70s now humid but it's it's cool um so it's a perfect day to get out here and do some work i'm gonna get out here i'm trying to wait on this dude to get off off the ground a little bit i'm gonna get out here and cut some grass here shortly get the place cleaned up a little bit but i think between now and then i gotta find me some dirt yeah there it is we uh we're gonna go down here and put these tomatoes in the ground go ahead and get those in but today what i'm gonna do is i got all the, the old tomatoes out of here this is the actually the second plant of tomatoes and uh we uh just now started getting tomatoes off of it pretty consistent but we've got better boys we've got cherokee purples we've got jubilee and we've got german johnson and all of them have been doing fairly well I haven't tried the Jubilee yet. I got some up at the house that are ready that I'm gonna try today. And uh, they got blight, all of them's got blight on them. It's just, it's something that you're gonna have to deal with during humidity, during um, hot weather. But 
what I got here is I've got three Secura cherry tomatoes. And you can see this dude's already got tomatoes on it. But uh, I got three of those. I've got nine Rebelskis. This is supposed to be a jam up slicing tomato. Almost looks like a brandy wine. The image that I've seen looks like a brandy wine, but it's supposed to be pretty prolific. And down there, I've got a tray of Bellarosas. I've got 12 Bellarosas that I'm gonna plant. Bellarosas is supposed to be a really, really good tomato for heat. And we're at the end of August here. Um, and normally our hot, hot weather will last up till the end of September. Then the nights will start cooling off um, considerably. We'll get down in the 60s at night. And things start growing a little better then. So we're looking forward to that. By that time, these tomatoes should be up and running and we can grow tomatoes here until frost. Um, you just have to take real good care of them. You have to use a lot of copper spray on them. But these tomatoes here, I'm not gonna worry about. I'm gonna let these guys go. I mean, you can see they're not terrible, but here in the next week or so, they probably won't have a limb on them. But by then, hopefully we've got what we want off of this. And then these tomatoes will be kicking in and carry us until first frost. I wanted to mention the trellis that I have these guys on. You remember when we first started planting tomatoes, we were doing the Florida weed. And I mean, it did okay, but when you get uh, big, real thick, bushy, determinate tomatoes like uh, homesteads and black crims and all that, I'm not so sure that uh, Florida weed is the way to go. Now, if you keep them pruned, yeah, it'll work, but I found that using the trellis style that I used on my cucumbers worked great. Now, let me give you a shot of this. Um, same thing, I pegged it to the ground, but I actually bought these clips and you can get them on Amazon. I mean, like 500 of them for like 10 bucks. I mean, they're really inexpensive, but yeah, tie them up at the top. Now, if you wanted to do the drop and lean method, I mean, you could just leave you a little bit of line up top and do the same thing. Just let the plant fall, leave you some line loose and do it that way. I mean, I know I got a lot of guys in the greenhouses do it like that, but this dude here, I mean, he's done, he's done went well above and beyond the, uh, the trellis. So, He's going to start doing this number growing down, and what we'll do is basically just lay him on this and try to keep it tied up that way. As long as he grows, we're going to let him do it. Um, there's another one in the back. Then grow past the trellis. And these are seven foot T posts. I'm six foot tall, so we'll, you know, the poles are six feet. So we got a seven foot tomato plant over there and over there, and you can see we got some more down there. But yeah, they're not going to get much bigger. They'll just start getting blocky real thick. But yeah, I like this trellis method and I've got, you know, a whole lot more poles laying over there. These guys here will be trellised just like this is behind me. And uh, that is going to be the norm from now on here on our farm. It's a lot simpler to do. Um, these tomatoes here were spaced out uh, every three feet. I could get away from with doing it every two feet um, with the irrigation setup that I've got. And next year we will. We'll do tomatoes every two feet. So. Right now, we're gonna stick with what we got, finish out the rest of the year this way. And then uh, next year, we'll pick up with a, a different style trellis for sure. Same model, maybe just a little different platform. I may go to bigger poles, I don't know, I don't know. Got a lot to do, a lot of thinking to do between now and then because tomatoes are one of the things that we can move a lot of. And people depend on tomatoes because um, a lot of everybody don't grow a bunch of different varieties. So we have pretty much nailed down two of the possibly three of the staples that we're going to keep on the farm um, for next year and I've got enough room here that I can run six different tomatoes and I also actually got another plot that I'm going to start up next year for tomatoes too so we could possibly get another four in there all right guys so we got all the tomato plants in he's uh, 17 in each row and they different varieties um, this first row here there's three Secura cherry tomato plants um, after that we've got some celebrities we've got some Bellarosas and we've got some Rebelskis and they all um, all look pretty healthy I watered them in pretty good whenever I put them in the ground and uh, I know, you know sowing things or transplanting plants when it's hot like this you stand a 50-50 chance of losing them but really all I got left to do now is get out here and put the drip irrigation in and uh, water them in real good but old big red it done popped out now so it's going to get hot really fast um, 
This morning it was 72. It's probably pushing 90 now. And humidity is just crazy. Guys, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to go down here. I'm probably going to try to put around the purple hull peas in in that lower garden. See if I can get those in. I got plenty of time, 60, 70 days um, before the next, well, before the first frost. So I got time to get those in if I can keep the deer out of them. But yeah, it feels good to be making videos again, guys, especially out in the garden, even though it is hot. But uh, I promise you it won't be that long before I put out another one. If you will, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you get notified every time I put out a video. As always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.